Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making blueberry muffins. Blueberry muffins are actually a really simple recipe and you can use fresh or frozen blueberries. I have some frozen blueberries that have already thawed out. You don't need to thaw them out if you're using, using the frozen ones. You want two cups of blueberries though. Mine just happened to have thawed out. My dry ingredients are two cups of flour and I'm gonna add a tablespoon of baking powder and about a quarter teaspoon of salt to that. You can also use two cups of self-rising flour and leave this out. And I have a cup of sugar. I've got a couple teaspoons of vanilla. You can add a little more if you like. Two eggs, half a cup of milk, and a stick of butter. Now, one of the differences in a good muffin and a really good muffin is adding a little bit of air. So I'm going to whip my butter and my sugar in my stand mixer until it kind of gets fluffy. If you're mixing this by hand and you know you get tired, it's okay. It doesn't have to be that whipped, but it does make your muffins better. And you can mix these by hand. And a lot of the ingredients we're going to fold in. We're not going to mix them in. Okay, I mean, I didn't whip mine a whole lot. You could whip it even more. You can whip it till it's just super, super fluffy. And I've seen people um, bake and whip that until it was three or four times the size it normally is. And you can do that. The more air in your muffins, the better at this point. Now we're gonna get to a point where you can over mix them. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add my eggs and my milk in here and my vanilla and kind of give that all a little bit of a mix. And then that's all we're gonna use the mixer for. Okay, give your bowl a little bit of a scrape because you will have some of the butter and sugar stuck up on the side of it. And you don't wanna over whip your eggs and stuff either, but you do wanna kinda incorporate your eggs and your sugar and your milk together. And just mix that a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take my bowl off my mixer because like I said, we're not mixing anything else on the mixer. And I said, you know, a little air is the big difference in okay muffins and really, really good muffins. So I am going to sift my flour and you can buy an old fashioned sifter like your grandma had. Or you can get one of these cheapy little mesh sifters, the wire screens, and they'll do it just fine. Uh, they're very inexpensive and available just about everywhere. Just pour your flour in here and shake it a little bit and it'll go right through it. It'll put some air in it just like the old fashioned sifters did. And it works about as fast. Tap it on your hand a little bit to get the flour to go through it. And then fold that in. If you save your baking powder until the last time you stir it, it makes a difference in your baking. And that's one of those new tips that I learned. You're never too old to learn something new. And I don't always remember to do it still because for my whole life, I've added the salt and the baking powder right into the flour. When I'm baking home bake stuff, I do use um, unbleached flour. It's just considerably healthier. It doesn't give you quite as fine a texture in baked goods, but it's a whole lot better for you. And I think the flavor is actually a little bit better. They're just not quite as light, I guess. So if you want it super, super light and you want it to taste more processed, get the bleached flour. But if you want more of that taste you grew up on and maybe not quite so bad for you, do the unbleached flour. All right, now I'm gonna add in my blueberries. Now, if you have fresh blueberries, you can dust your blueberries in just about a quarter of a cup of your flour. Just put it in with your blueberries and shake it around and it'll keep them from sticking together. Now, I couldn't do that because mine were frozen and then they had thawed and they had too much juice in them and it would have just made a mess. But that's a good tip if you're making blueberry muffins or blueberry pancakes or some kind of a blueberry breakfast cake. 
And it's worth noting that you can bake this in a nine by nine or one of those eight by 11 pans or something like that and turn this into a blueberry crumb cake. Same recipe. All right, now I don't wanna to totally destroy my blueberries. So I'm gonna go ahead now and add my baking powder and my salt. And I'm gonna run that through my sifter too, just for good measure. And I'm gonna fold that in a little bit so it's all evenly distributed. Kinda be gentle with your blueberries. You don't want them all squished. And once you cream your butter and your sugar together, especially if you go ahead and mix in your egg and your milk, this all mixes up super easy. I mean, literally just a little bit of folding. It's not like it's gonna wear you out. And if you don't have the mixer, you know, like I said, you can do it by hand. And now they're all mixed. Now this will make about 18 regular muffins. It'll make about a dozen of the big muffins. And the big muffins now in the grocery store delis are at least $2 a piece. I mean, $2 per muffin. Uh, I use the frozen berries because I found them on sale. And buy your berries when they are on sale, whether you're using fresh or frozen. I found a great big bag of organic frozen blueberries the other day in the grocery store. And I thought, you know what? I could use some blueberry muffins in my life and I know some other people who could too. So I got them. And that's what I'm using in this. But, it, you know, getting them on sale, you can probably make all of these muffins. Well, I know I don't have more than three or four dollars in the whole thing. So for the price of two big muffins, you can have a dozen big muffins. And muffins are a great take and bake, share thing. Take them to your Sunday school class. Um, they're good for breakfast for the kids through the week. You can bake them on the weekends and grab them as you're running out the door and the kids are running out the door. And there's a cup of sugar in these. I mean, it's less sugar than in sugary cereal. And good luck eating a bowl of cereal running out the door. These are good, you know, make some and get together with the girls and have a cup of coffee on the porch this weekend. And I know it's not quite baking season yet. I mean, if you're like me, you probably haven't had your oven on a whole lot the past two months. But I'm about past due for something good and baked. <laughs> In the wintertime, there just ain't much better than waking up and having a warm muffin for breakfast. I mean, it's just one of them things, you know, some fruit in it. It kind of relieves the winter blues. And at this point, it's so hot something baked i think is good for the summer blues you can also get a portioner for your muffins or your cupcakes and i thought i had one it's like a big cookie scooper and i don't know what on earth i have done with it but a spoon works and if you've got a spatula you know you can scoop them out fairly neatly and scrape it off with your spatula if you need to and i've kind of made these a little bit big but that's okay too. <laughs> said I'm gonna share them with folks, but I'm still gonna have plenty enough to go around with the people I gotta share them with. If you're making them for your kids though for breakfast, you might wanna be a little bit more careful than I am because they're probably gonna grab two on their way out the door and then you'll run out before you intend to run out. I only got 14 out of that. So that's all you gotta do to them. You don't have to top them with anything. You don't have to make anything to go on them. But if you want to, before you put them in the oven, you can add a simple crumb topping. And we have done simple crumb toppings, several different varieties. Uh, for these, I wouldn't even put any spice in it. Just like a quarter of a cup of sugar, a quarter of a cup of flour, and a couple tablespoons of butter and crush it up. And then sprinkle it on the top of them. Just a plain crumb topping. That's delicious. It adds a little bit of texture to the muffin and it makes it pretty. Another thing you can do, and I have mentioned this before and didn't have it, is this is sanding sugar. It's about the size of a grain of sand. And that's what they put on the muffins in the bakery, those $2 ones. And you just sprinkle it on there like sand. 
before you put it in the oven. You do have to add a crumb topping or you have to add the sand before you put it in the oven. And the, like I said, the crumb topping is super simple and we've done it before. I'll link a video in here with the crumb topping so you can see how to make it. I think I even have that in a separate video. I know I have it in a short if I don't have it in a long video. But that's all there is to sanding them. Or sprinkling, you sprinkle the crumb topping the same way. I would put maybe a teaspoon of crumb topping on each one and just sprinkle a little bit of the sugar on it. If you want to, you don't have to. You're gonna put these in a, a preheated 350 degree oven for 18 to 22 minutes, depending on your oven. Keep an eye on them. You want them golden brown when they come out. You wanna be able to touch them and have them spring back. Stick a cake tester in them or whatever. And you can bake this in a loaf pan. Uh, you might want to do two loaves out of it. It would do one big high loaf though. Take a little longer to bake. Uh, or the nine by nine or the uh, eight by 11 pan if you want to do a crumb cake out of it. So let's put these in the oven for 20 minutes. And when you take them out of the oven, they should look like this, lightly brown. You probably cannot even see the ones that we put the sugar on. This has sugar on it. That one has sugar on it. It just kind of adds a little shimmer to it. And a little bit of texture again. That sugar on the top will add a little texture. Now you can make a cream cheese frosting to go on them and you could put some cream cheese filling in this too. And I have a recipe for the cream cheese filling. If your kids or your family really, really like the cream cheese filled baked goods that's super easy to do and you just fill your cupcakes about or your muffins about halfway up put a tablespoon or so of that filling and then finish filling them up and it bakes in there and i will put up the video to that cream cheese filling because it would be really good in this too i'll link it what we're going to do here is we're going to make a little glaze for the top of them and we've done this glaze. It, what I have in my bowl already is some powdered sugar. I didn't even measure it and a little bit of vanilla that I also did not measure. Now this is the simple sugar glaze that you would see on donuts or just about any kind of baked goods. But we're gonna do it a little bit different. Now you can add milk to it to get the plain glaze or even a little bit of water to it. But because I had those frozen blueberries, I have a whole bunch of blueberry juice. So I'm gonna add just enough of this juice that came out of my blueberries to turn this into a glaze. And I didn't wanna put that juice in my muffins, so you really shouldn't let your frozen blueberries thaw out. You lose all that flavor. But if I had put that in my muffins, it would have turned the muffin itself blue and it would have taken much longer to bake because it would have had a lot of extra liquid in it. So just add maybe a tablespoon or two of that juice or milk. If you don't have the blueberry juice, you can use milk or even water to make this. And you wanna get it to the point where it's just a glaze. We've done this glaze before and I'm sure you've seen other people do it, probably done it yourself. Just like that. You want it pourable or dippable. And what you can do is you can take your muffins and just dip it in there and let it kind of run over the muffin. And it has a nice blueberry glaze on it that we literally made with the blueberry juice that we'd have to throw out. And that's all there is to do in the glaze. So you can do a glaze, you can do a cream cheese frosting, you can do a cream cheese filling, just do the sugar, do a crumb topping. Make them how you want to make them or bake it in a pan and put some of that cream cheese filling in the pan. And in fact, we're probably going to do this recipe in a blueberry cream cheese coffee cake. So, but it's the same recipe basically. I hope you keep this recipe. I hope you make some and share them. Share them with a friend, take them to Sunday school, make them for you and your kids so they've got something fresh and good that they can grab and eat on the way out the door and it's really pretty good for you. Before we go, I wanna leave you with Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. 
God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. And it goes on to talk about reaping in the flesh and reaping in the spirit. And reaping in the flesh is responding to life and reacting to the way people are treating us. But sowing in the spirit is treating people the way that we want to be treated, not the way that they are treating us. And God tells us that if we sow in the spirit, that in due time, we're going to reap that. If we don't give up, if we don't quit. So if life is hard and if people are not treating you the way you think you should be treated or the way that you're treating them, don't give up. Continue to sow in the Spirit. Continue to be kind. Continue to be generous. Continue to be loving and patient. And giving. Give. There's, you know, every, every religion in the world believes in sowing and reaping. Christians put it as the biblical principle of sowing and reaping. And the Bible says that in due time, we'll reap what we sow. And other religions call it karma, but in different things, what goes around comes around. But it is a worldwide philosophy, I guess. And as Christians, we know it to be true. So don't give up. Continue to sow in the Spirit. If we all want to live in a better world, and the only way to live in a better world is to sow what's good. And eventually we will reap what's good. Thank you so much for joining us again in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. Share our videos with your friends, please. And until next time, remember to put God first.